Hey, this is John at LearningGuitarNow.com, and in this free video, I want to show you how to play a lick that's very similar to one that Diggy plays in uh, the Live at the Fillmore East album uh, from Done Somebody Wrong, played in the key of C. Uh, it's just, I think it's an excellent example of the way Diggy Betts plays, has a couple unique aspects that makes his style so legendary. If you like the tab, the backing track, and the interactive version of this podcast, think about becoming an All Access Pass subscriber. When you do become a subscriber, you'll also get access to over 1,000 blues guitar videos, and that includes slide guitar as well. Okay, let's go ahead and start this free lesson. Okay, let's go ahead and break down this Dickie Betts style lick. Uh, it's pretty similar to a lick he does in uh, Done Somebody Wrong from the Fillmore East. And this lick comes in on the four chord, the F chord. We're in the key of C. So the first part of what I'm doing is this Chuck Berry move here, and I'm just going to play this lick twice, and it sounds like this. Um, just do that twice. So what I'm doing is bending the 10th fret of the G string with my third finger here, barring the bottom two on the 8th fret with my first finger. Just classic blues move there. Uh, then pulling off 11 to 8 on the B string. Now we're doing a super cool thing I, I like to do a lot, and I've got it from uh, Dickie Betts, and Warren does it a lot as well. It's doing this kind of pedal point move here uh, from 11th fret on the G string to the 8th fret on the uh, B string. You got this. Pretty cool sound. And then just walk down the blues scale. That's the flat 5 interval, and then we're going tr straight to the... Uh, the five interval. So you have this going. Except on different strings so you get a different sound. Do that twice. And then just walk down the blues scale. 11, 10, 8 on the G string. Pretty sweet lick that, right there. And I hear Dickie Betts, Warren Haynes, uh, just wearing that kind of stuff out a lot. And Warren will just take it uh, to the next level and add the top string on there. Always hear him doing that. But in this case, I'm just using the B string as the pedal point between uh, two notes here. Uh, you got 11 and 8. Pretty sweet lick there. So I do that twice, and then we're back to the one chord, the C chord. And then we do this hammer-on pull-off, so this section's gonna sound like this. Pretty uh, classic Dicky Betts style move there. Uh, playing on the C chord, and we're moving into the five chord, the G chord. So after the other lick, we've come off this. Now we go eight on the uh, D string, the first finger, and then 10 on the uh, A string, 10th fret, third finger, and do this pull off thing. Dicky Betts does all these pull off moves like this. Pull off 10 to eight, and then back to 10 on the A. So you got first section, next section, hammer on eight to 10 on the D string, eight on the G string, pull off 10 to 8 on the G string, and then hit 8th fret again. So that part slowly have this. If you're in, we're ending on the 10th fret. A little bit faster. It's a classic Dickie Betts style move. Now we're going to slide into 12th fret on the G string with a third finger. Now we're going to hit 11th fret with our uh, first finger on the B string. And we're dragging these notes. So we got 12, then 11, 13 on the B string, and then 11, 12, 13 on the high E string. And just drag those, just put, just make it just sound like it's behind the beat. You'll hear uh, Dicky Betts doing that stuff a lot. And then we're gonna bend um, to the, thir the 13th fret of the high E string. That's when the five chord 
G chord comes in. So that section. Now we go 11th fret on the high E string, this cool little arpeggio. 13 on the B string. That's the C note key we're in. And then 12th fret of the G string. So you have this. Pretty sweet lick. And you notice that 12th fret is a G note and we're playing another G chord. Uh, it's an excellent way to um, play to the chord. I mean, pretty much you're just ending on that 12th fret there. A G is pretty basic, but it just sounds really cool the way he does it. The next step, we're going to the four chord, the F chord. We're bending the 15th fret up, BB King position here. Uh, you wait one count, and after the four chord comes in, one, two, bend 15 ups to the 18th fret sound, the flat seventh interval. And then you let that sound for one count, and then you go 15 to 13 on the high E. Let's play that section sound like this. That's the end of it. So the, that part, you're gonna bend up 15th fret on the high E, and then 15, 13 on the high E string. Bend 15 on the B slightly, pull down to 15 on the B, and then end on the 13th, the C note. Now we change positions back to the, uh, I like to call this the Albert King position. Hammer on the minor third to the major third on the high E string, uh, 11 to 12, and then hit 13. It's an excellent little blues move right there. And then do it again. And then that we're doing that arpeggio type thing again. 13, 12. 13, 12 on the G. Then we're back to 11th fret on the B string with the first finger, 12, G string, 10 on the G string. Now slide back and hammer on, major third, minor third, eight to nine. String skip, hit eighth fret on the high E, end on the flat seventh, 11th fret B string. That whole thing in context slowly is this. Pretty excellent move moving from the BB King position to the Albert King position to the first position minor pentatonic scale. You want a great exercise to work on position shifting? This is a great one to do. Uh, great way to sound like Dickie Betts, and also you um, can move between three different cool blues positions. So I'll go ahead and play the whole lick for you now. Sounds like this. Excellent demonstration of the way Dickie Betts likes to phrase his licks, and as well as moving through three different um, blues pentatonic, if you want to call it that. It's kind of just kind of blending a few different positions together, but just a great way to uh, move down those three areas, sound like Dickie Betts, and play some cool stuff over a cool song. Okay, that's it for this podcast. Like I said, if you want the tabs and backing tracks for this lesson, uh, think about becoming an All Access Pass subscriber. Once again, I'm John with LearningGuitarNow.com, and I'll see you next time.